tell my first guest. Whew, she made a boss move that is making news right now. Take a look at this video. This is from Monday. Catherine Legg on the practice run, Indy 500. Didn't go as planned. She's all right, and guess what? Catherine is bossing up. She is back on the track this Sunday. She, here's the deal. It's not just the recovery from that moment. Here's the deal, this Sunday, Catherine will be the only woman competing in the Indianapolis 500. There is no bigger race in the world. It's 500 miles, 200 laps of pure adrenaline that would make me faint looking at the track. <laughs> Catherine, by the way, is part of history. She is one of only nine women in history to ever race in the Indy 500 in its 100 years of existence. In 2002, she became the first woman ever to win the British Racing Drivers Club Rising Star Honor. This girl's on fire, as they say. Tam Fam, please welcome one of the fastest female drivers in the world, Katherine Legg. Come on out, boss. Yes. Ah, congratulations. Oh, gosh. Have a seat. Have a seat. Um, do you dress this cute in that car? Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately not. We have to wear what they give us. They have to wear, but underneath that, this is what you wear? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> oh, congratulations. First of all, how are you feeling? Um, you know, we saw the headlines. How are you feeling? I'm, I'm fine. I'm, you're fine? Uh, yeah. Well, that's what you're built for. I mean, you started out go-kart racing at, what, five? Nine. Nine. Almost. Same. Almost five. Nine. Look at <laughs> It was the 80s. Give me a break. It was Come the on. 80s. Let me tell you, people are wearing jumpsuits like that now. That's Look at the style. glasses, though. So, so bad. Look how, so you're nine years old. Your dad was the big influence here. Take me back to that kid and what lit this fire. Oh, gosh. Um, I think it was a number of different things. Like, I was a tomboy. I loved the adrenaline, like, kind of rush. Um, it was a number of things, like, competition, teamwork, um, the, the speed, just the competition with the yourself. The speed, how do you know speed when you're nine, where you're on the trike, like, let me get out of here. I mean, <laughs> I, how do you even know the adrenaline of speed at age nine? Well, when you're go-karting, you have, like, you have a very small frame of reference, right? But it's still fast. I mean, you're still driving at age nine, which is most people aren't. And those things go, like, 70 miles an hour. They go 70 miles yeah. an hour? <laughs> I, I didn't realize, well, I yeah. probably realized that that's why I've never been on one. <laughs> so in the qualifying rounds, Indy 500, you hit the fastest qualifying lap by female driver for the race, 231 Ooh. miles an hour. It's pretty fast, huh? So actually, when you watch it like this, it doesn't look fast. Yes, it does. 100% <laughs> it does. When you're standing in pit lane, though, and you're watching the cars go by, you can't see them because it's just a blur. And you think, God, those guys are crazy. Right. And then you realize you're one of them. So what does that, I mean, I, I'm fascinated by 231 miles per hour. I read a quote that you said, it's like an addiction that gets in your blood. So yeah. the need for speed is real? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's the challenge, you know, like the challenge with yourself, the speed. It's everything about it. Like you can never get the ultimate lap. There's always something on the table. There's always one tiny thing that you can do to improve. Very rarely do you get out of the race car and think, okay, that was as good as that car could go. That's fascinating. That is fascinating, especially when you are breaking records as you have. You get out and you figure, I could have done that better. It's, like, it, I mean, one, that's a competitive spirit. Yeah, one or two little things. I think that's a part of the competition, right? 100%. Yeah. So going back to the kid, though, so you're nine years old. Back then, you're one of the few girls yeah. in the club. The guys, the boys are looking at you. Yeah. How did you handle that? What did your parents or your dad tell you? At age nine, you're just one of the drivers, right? Like... You don't feel any different. Um, when did you feel the difference? When did you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm not one of the guys. I'm a history-making girl. Well, I think when you kind of hit your teenage years and you realize that boys and girls are different. And, <laughs> you know, the suits start to fit different in the yeah, front, all these things. Yeah. yeah. And the boys start looking at you differently. Yes, and then you're a bit of an outcast. And I was fortunate, though, I had, like, some friends in racing that would take care of me, and I was one of, like, a few in a group. Yeah. And if I hadn't had that, I don't know that I would have got through it. And I think those times are tough. And that's why 
now there are lots of young girls who start go-karting, but they don't really have the gumption to get through those tough years because you are bullied and you are like made to feel different right. a lot of times. Well, and it's by the parents as well. Like the parents are worse. How up though? I mean, because that's the show, this thing, everybody in this show, and I said, I don't care who you are, male, female watching this, I want these kinds of shows to be an inspiration because we all face a challenge, right? 100%. You said the, the kids are bullied, but also the parents. I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen videos of some of the parents at events. So how did you, or what do you use as your North Star when it's time to boss up? You got a big day on Sunday. I'll be watching. Yeah. You'll be on the track. How do you boss up? I think it's a number of things. I think it's belief in yourself. And if you don't have that, you have to like fake it till you make it. I believe right? in that. Yeah. yeah. So I think if you've got a dream and that dream is so strong and you just keep kind of going after that dream, the other stuff is just noise yeah. and you can't let it get to you. You've got to kind of put it to the side and just keep doing what you do. Keep doing what you're doing. So you are one of only nine women to ever compete. The first was the legend Janet Guthrie, 1977. You've said she's one of the people you look up to. Well, your big day is Sunday. She was adorable back then. <laughs> wonder what wonder what she looks like now. I think we have a message. Take a look. Oh. Cameron, when I became the first woman to compete in the Indy 500 in 1977, I had to use the women's room out in the spectator area because women hadn't been allowed in the garage area with the race cars. It was a zoo. So some progress has been made. Catherine, I'm so delighted that you have a shot at it this year because you are such a talented driver. Little girls everywhere will be cheering for you. And so <laughs> You may cry. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Janet. Little Thank girls you. everywhere will be cheering for you on Sunday. Yeah, it's amazing. It really is. Uh, but things things have been changing, right? Yeah. Because I've done this race twice before, 10 years ago, and most of the spectators were guys. Uh, on, on race day, there was families that came, but on the run up to, you, very, you notice it was very heavily male. Yeah. Um, and this year, there seems to be as many women as there are men. You know, this is, I know, it's amazing. We recognize. It's really yeah. cool. And also, you know, you don't tend to have female-centric partners and, and sponsors on the car, and, and Elf Cosmetics has partnered with me. Yeah. And so that is the first cosmetics company ever in IndyCar as well to, to kind of, like, give an example to women of female empowerment. Wow. And it's like... It's Congratulations. Amazing. Well, we are excited. We will be watching Thank on you. Sunday. Go get it done. Thank you. Because you will. Thank you so much.